Today I am going to make a big pinching pot bowl just using stoneware clay. Hi there and welcome. First I'll just start by kneading the clay to get the plasticity and if there are air bubbles in it I will get them also out of the clay. The clay I use is stoneware. It's also a raku clay. Uh, you see when I net it I try to turn it, rotate the clay and get the pressure even on all the sides. This way if there are air in there the air will just pop out. Okay, so here we go. Now, if you're not used to doing pinching pots, uh, this size might be a little too much. So start by using smaller amounts of clay, but I mean it's just clay. If you succeed, it's good. If you don't, well, just try to make it again. No problem. So now, I'll start by making a almost round piece of clay and you see that the end is not really great here so I will cut that away here we go and you can also see if there is bubbles left or air left in your clay when you cut it away like that Okay, so now I think I'm almost ready to begin. I always use plywood, plywood board, or then this chip wood board. This is chip wood. And it's good because the clay will not stuck to it, it will not stick, uh, and uh, it's really easy to work on. Uh, the extra amount of water will go into this but you also need to remember that you can't just leave your clay on it because it will dry the clay out really fast so when you want to dry it you need to put some plastic underneath otherwise it will dry too quickly and you will have cracks okay what I need now is a little bit of water Okay, so now just a little bit of water, not too much. If you put too much water on, it will feel okay in the beginning, but you will actually get cracks. Uh, never use too much water. Just a little bit if you feel that the clay is getting dry. Now, before I start, I try to make it a little bit more round, like this. And then it's time to begin. If you want to see another pinching pot that I did, I also made this pinching pot coffee mug. You can see it in my video. Uh, there are lots of videos on polymer clay and also other ceramics. Okay, so now. I just put water on my thumb and push it into the middle of the clay and I start by rotating the whole thing like this. Try to get all the way and reach as deep as possible into the clay. We don't want to make a 
really thick bottom on this so you need to actually work your thumb all the way in and just drag a little bit with your thumb to get the clay out and get it out on the sides so you pull it out and uh, this way you will get the perfect bowl now you can also use especially when you have a big piece of clay like this you can also use the surface not just use your hands because it might be too much work just using your thumb so you can also do it just like rolling a clay like this on the surface and then you actually use the technique that you use your hand to push it you can also use it closer to the surface so that you will actually feel how thick the clay is and this is good because then you actually know how much material you have to work with now I'm not really satisfied yet so I I need to get deeper in uh, I will stand up and use both hands to get all the sides even by using both hands you can feel how thick your clay is how much material you have between your hands and if you have You have got this wheel it's perfect for this um, because then you you can put all your energy on just feeling how thick it is you don't have to turn the clay so much the wheel does the job for you uh, now when I am going to dry this I need to put plastic on a piece of plywood and uh, of course cover it otherwise it might just crack it should take about one or two weeks to to dry uh, stoneware and raku clay is very forgiving when you think about drying it's kind of hardy so so even if you sometimes forget to to cover it up really good it might still be okay when you find it two or three days later uh, almost dry but if you have earthenware be really careful it needs to be covered up you see I still use both hands not too much water just a little bit and you can actually start feeling it all the way. Remember to keep your hands almost like in locked positions so you know how thick your clay is. The other way you can do it is by pinching. That's probably why it's a pinching part. I lock my hands like a claw and then just roll it. This way you will get the even better thickness all around. You feel your fingers, you know where you have them and you just pull it up like this. A little bit to get the final shape. Then you need to use your hands. If you want to get it wider, then you have to, of course, stretch it more from the inside and work the clay out. If you want to have a narrow opening, you need to work this way. And you can actually push the clay inside also with both of your hands like this. Now I want to, to get it a little bit more round, but still open up the, the, the edge of it, the rim, so it's really, really nice. Don't hurry, take your time. And as I, as I said, if you feel that you're not really used to it, start small. You can always go bigger, all the time. 
this spot I will actually glaze with my crayons that I made. Uh, I will put a, a video on how to make your ceramics crayons using just porcelain and oxides and it actually works really good so I will show you that in a video later okay I have the edges almost the way I want them This is actually one of my favorite techniques. Now, I lock my fingers and I just pull to get this edge really nice. A little bit more water. You know, many people like to use tools like these. Um, of course, you can use them too if you want to, but I still prefer to use my hands. You can actually, when you are done, when you're finished and you want to have a really nice finish to it, then the tools might be handy. But before that, I prefer just my fingers. You have better control, in my opinion, with, with only fingers. Sometimes you might get these bumps or things that don't look that good. You can always, as long as it's really wet still, the clay, you can fill it up. A little bit. So now, just to make it the better shape, it's very easy. If I push here, you see it moves. If I push here, I can move it. So uh, it's really easy to, to get it right. Okay, so now let's have a look with the camera what this looks like. I will show you. Okay, so from my point of view, this is what it looks like. And you can see that it's really deep. It's not, I don't have too much clay in the bottom. It's really nice now. And you can see it's quite round. It looks really good. Um, now, if you don't want to cut the edges right now, you can always sand them down a little bit later if you want to, or just leave it. It's all up to you. But we have this one more thing left. My personalized stamp. I will put it here. So I just push it into the clay and voila, there we go. You can probably see my stamp in there. If you want to, um, to fix the edges or the, the rim, uh, you can use, as I said, a needle a piece of metal like this, a metal rod, or this wire. I prefer this and that's because I can lock my 
hand, my arm in, a, in the right position. I just put this the way I want it. Now you can't see, but I'm, I'm actually leaning my elbow to the table so I know exactly where this rod is and I push it down as much as I want to. Then I just keep it on the exact same spot. Turn around and this way when I reach the whole circle this will just be perfect. Now remove the extra material. That's it. And uh, you can see it's kind of the same thickness all around. Here I have a little dent, I see, but otherwise it looks really good. So I'm happy with it. You can use a sponge to get the edges smoother, or just like me, use your fingers like this and leave it till after it's dry. Then you can finish up the the last pieces of it. Okay, that's it.